Hello guys, thanks for coming to our weekly paper reading session. Today, I'm gonna have a long review of the paper Cascaded Diffusion Models for High Fidelity Image Generation, which was mentioned in Dr. Jeff Dean's 2021 Google Research Annual Report. Um, the take home message uh, is that they proposed a uh, few things. The first is the cascaded diffusion model. And also conditional augmentation for the super resolution task, I think. So the super resolution task is to, as shown here, is try to go from a um, low resolution image to a high resolution image, which is to recover the missing information in the original image. And they, are, they achieved a very good results, uh, both um, uh, sub, uh, in both uh, objective metrics and the subjective metrics. And here are the results they uh, obtained, you can see some of, uh, of the images are very uh, vivid. Um, you could barely tell whether this is a real image or it's a, um, it's a, it's a, it's a regional high resolution image. Okay. Okay. Um, the, the things I think it, which is interesting is not the first one because this thing was proposed in 2015 and the, this paper, um, was doing some cascaded uh, um, architecture of the diffusion model. Uh, but what an interesting thing is this thing called a conditional augmentation proposed by them. I think uh, because the VAE was proposed after this, this one heavily uh, borrowed the concept from uh, a variational autoencoder. and uh, they achieved a very interesting and good results. Um, so I think I would first uh, start to give you a very quick overview of the diffusion model. Okay. First of all, diffusion model. Models. Well, suppose um, let me open a new page, which is better. First, suppose you zoom that you have a original high resolution image. Okay. See, I have a 256 by 256 and the Diffusion model is um, you go through a forward process. What does the forward process do? It will gradually destroy the data, original data x0 to x1, x2, in the middle I call xt, and then finally I got something called a X capital T. Because you're keeping adding the uh, mosaic, mosaic uh, operation in it. So it's like adding noise. Eventually you will get something uh, lower, very low resolution, right? Say 64 by 64. Okay. 
And during this process, uh, suppose you have a uh, uh, suppose that you you have something at the xt minus one. You want to go from this to this. This is called corruption, right? How oh, it's being corrupted. So for each uh, pixel uh, at xt minus one. To go from this to the XT, it follows a normal distribution. So what does that mean? So say at time T you have XT, okay? Or XT minus one. And assume that the XT would be um, sampled from a normal distribution. So, so the mean mean equals to one minus beta t x t minus one. So it's a scaled version of the previous sample's value. And uh, the sigma equals to beta t times i. So it's also scaled version of the standard deviation, okay, or the covariance matrix. And then you can see, because I from time t to t, t minus 1 to t, I using a random process, which is a Gaussian pro, uh, process, to model the xt, so I randomly generated one sample, say one sample here, okay? I got xt, okay? And then for xt plus one, I have another Gaussian, right? So I, I, I assume this have uh, another uh, distribution of Gaussian distribution. I draw another sample xt plus one here. So you can see after I draw this, 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 so you can see the xc start to deviate from the original x0, okay? Eventually it will reach the xt, capital T. This is a forward or corruption process. And it does have a reverse reversal, right? Or reverse, reverse process. Reverse process is the process of recovering the original high resolution image. From the low resolution image. Okay. What does this do? Oh, I forgot to mention that they zoomed the the the, the Q this one follows the IID, okay. And also they want to first of all, they definitely want to to estimate a, Px0 is to accurately estimate this. If you're familiar with speech recognition, it's always a problem of estimating the p observation. It's very difficult. It's, um, how do you say that? Uh, estimating uh, the distribution of a random variable uh, is very difficult. So. But if, but if you want to estimate this, you can definitely uh, regard this as a marginalized probability, uh, and you can say this, right? You can use all the you can use all the corrupted image. I think I, I want to use another color pen. So you want to use all the previous corrupted image to see if you could uh, estimate this one, all right? But you definitely start from this one. You definitely start from this one because in the during the inference you don't have these uh, intermediate uh, corrupted images, okay? And then. 
for the reverse process, you also have an assumption that uh, the joint distribution can be uh, written like this using the ID assumption. And uh, the conditional probability follows a normal distribution. What does that mean? So say you have xt. You want to go from xt to xt plus one, uh, minus 1. So you eventually can get x0, right? Which is the uh, high resolution image. And then it assumes that suppose you already know xt or samples of xt. The xt minus 1 follows the distribution. So the probability of xt minus 1 given xt it sits on the mean and a, a special standard deviation. The mean t equals to mu theta xt at time t and the sigma t equals to sigma t xt t. What does that mean? It means that suppose uh, statistically speaking you observed uh, the xt lots of instances of xt's okay at here at here I want to use another xt here xt here xt here probably uh example near here right so during the training process you observe a lot of xt's values here and then as long as you can uh, estimating the mean of xc definitely um i just don't want to write the equation again let me write this this is an estimation of it this one okay this is equ equivalent to xc's or the t belongs to uh, observed in training okay Oh, this one, I think it's um, xt minus uh, mu t. t also belongs to the same set, okay? I think it's a. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, xt minus qt ut transpose, right? Yeah, by transpose. Anyways, uh, this is the estimated uh, version of this one. Suppose you can estimate this, then you can get the distribution. And then you were able to uh, get the probability distribution of xt given xt. Okay. Then you know the distribution of this. Then you put the conditional probability here. Then you got a joint probability. And you have, after you get a joint probability, you know the original um, p theta given of x x zero. Okay. Uh, and also they mentioned there's an ELBO mean evidence lower bound. I think this is easy to understand. Um, so suppose this is always like this. You want to, I think it's, um, okay. You always want to maximize this. Definitely want to maximize this. Or not, not, no, sorry, not maximize this. <laughs> Have an accurate 
estimation of this. But estimating this um, is uh, too complicated because I think um, instead uh, they want to estimate minus L theta x zero. Because this is always smaller than this, and uh, if you could uh, i I kind of uh anyways, you do want to maximize this so the 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 maximize this one is the more you you close to the to the probability of this one right so the estimation issue is always to find the optimum theta the optimum theta will give you estim accurate estimation of this this probability but uh you can also also convert this uh, task into a maximization task, which is to maximize the minus L theta of x zero. And uh, this one contains two terms. The first term is L t x zero. You can see. Remember, in the previous equation, uh, at the time t means lower resolution. You can imagine this as a uh, variational autoencoder problem. Uh, you can regard uh, the low resolution image as a latent space representation in the space, uh, a representation in the latent space. So you want um, the latent space to be uh not to, sp to spread apart so you want the the pxt to be close to the qxt given x0 as possible but also uh, for your estimation process or your backward back, uh, estimation process you want to find the optimum theta so at each time t uh, of the each term you submit sum, submit uh, sum together the, the KR divergence uh, uh, equation at time t you want this to be minima, as minimal as possible minimal as possible so that means uh, after this you want to, uh, the summation of this to be minimal as possible okay and what is this? Because uh, this one always only covers from capital T to T greater than one. So suppose your um, T equals to zero. Uh, this equation K DKL the Q become X zero given X T X zero. This is always one, right? And the p theta x zero x one. So if you write it, let me let me call this as q, okay? And this is a p, so it'll make it easier to write. So this is always equivalent to q, log q. Sorry, sigma q log I think I'm right yeah uh, correct me if I'm wrong I think I'm right um, so once this got to 1 this equivalent to log p and p is this right just write it down here The summation is gone, right? Because it's also this is always one. This is x zero, give me x one. 
So this is the equation. You just plug in here. Okay, this is also one part of this, but they just put it, pull it, pull it out here. But I think it's okay to put it inside. Okay. Uh, minimize this and minimize this. So minimize L theta. And then, so this is the, this side to be maximized. So you get a better estimate of the uh, X zero. Okay. Eventually your uh, recovery, the uh, image would have a better quality. And this because this equation says that um, because you are estimating theta, but you indeed you are estimating the not just a theta is too like a general term, but indeed you are estimating the um, like I mentioned in the previous slide, right here, you are estimating the mean and the covariance of x here time t. So because this is Gaussian distribution, you can go through all the uh, math equations which uh, are shown in these two papers. Uh, you can definitely get this one. And that they think, I think they modify the loss instead of ELBO, they convert it to MSE loss. Uh, but as a trivial, I think it's okay. So then they uh, they move on to the conditional diffusion model. This is very easy to understand because suppose they're using image net. So each image net, they have cat, dog, fish, uh, horse, human being. Uh, those are class labels. And uh, you can model your distribution uh, uh, prediction model by using the class label here it provides you just leverage you're, you're just leveraging the extra information you can get uh, it's very simple you just add a class here class label here everything just add a class i don't think it's it's newly proposed by them because they mentioned the reference here Architecture wise, I think um, I think it's straightforward. I don't want to mention that. I think they uh, it's originally used a UNet. Yeah, I think uh, it's not new, so they don't talk more about it. And the cascade pipeline. I think this is interesting because it's leveraging the concept of uh, VAE. I will give you a short review of what is VAE, okay? So suppose you have an autoencoder. Suppose you have an original uh, X, and you want to train an encoder that in, you can encode the X into a, a latent space. I think they call it latent space. This encoder. The, this is called the Z, right? And then later on, you have a decoder. You also can also train a decoder. So you get a output that's called the, the estimate of uh, X. So first of all, you want to the uh, X, this to be as close as possible, right? This is your first goal, the loss. This one is the first term. And the second term is what? Um, the second term is, I think, I kind of forgot the exact equation uh, out there, but I think it's uh, it's try to minimize the KL divergence of the z and the a normal distribution i think
Okay. Um, I think this is the general concept of actually this is not a VAE, but this is the general concept of AE autoencoder. So VAE goes one step further. Uh, you can see which is shown here. They're saying that um, the z other than just have a z of to have to be a vector. Other than, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to talk about the AE today, but this is VAE because z represent a distribution. So so z is no longer a vector. Remember in the auto encoder. Z is a vector, but the, the Z here in the VAE, Z is a, a distribution. So they want in the VAE, uh, they want the distribution of the Z to be as close to the normal distribution as possible. Why? Uh, go to the VAE paper and read it. And you can see that after this, uh, you can definitely estimate the, the probability of X0 by using but marginalize of all the possible z's. Okay. And uh, you remember the so so suppose you originally have x t, you want to go from x go to x zero, having uh, cascaded the estimation go from x t to x probably x t. And then go from xt to xt plus one, and this one, other than directly estimated from xt to zero, this is the cascade. This is being called cascade. Cascaded uh, pipeline, and the, this one is called the direct. And they say this uh, this one has a, a benefit to train this one because uh, they can get better or uh, higher resolution. Um, I think this makes sense. And also, um, the benefit is that the most of the modern capacity can be dedicated to low resolution, which empirically are most important of the same quality. Yeah, I think this, this sentence is a key if you're computer vision people, uh, if you want to make things work. But I'm not a computer vision guy, I just learn it. And also this one, uh, they allow the individual model to be trained independently, uh, and that it can be tuned at each uh, resolu specific resolution to get a better performance. I think it allows to, the model becomes bigger. <laughs> So if you know, it gets better results. So I'm not surprised, uh, cascaded diffusion model. Um, but the, what is really interesting is this one, conditional um, aug augmentation with the cascaded diffusion model. Uh, so it has to be ca cascaded diffusion model. Why? First of all, they talk about the blurred augmentation. Uh, this is, is, is easy to understand. Um, I think they just add some random noise when they go from xc to xc minus one. So they can have, remember during training, suppose you have lots of uh, um, training samples of xt, right? You, you, you corrupt it, you corrupt the, in the training is always the, 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 the forward process. Yeah. Go back to this one. So always the forward process, right? Uh, you can always try to corrupt the, the image of X0 by one time after another time, so you get uh, lots of images. Um, suppose you corrupted the image for a thousand uh, forward processes, a thousand forward processes. Then at time xt, you can only have a thousand samples, right? But you can always uh, add noise to xt. So that's my understanding. Say after you add noise, probably add random noise, 
So you can multiply this by 100 times. Say 100 times. I don't know whether it's 100 times. But this, this becomes 10. It becomes about 100,000 samples of XT. So this one could give you better estimate because it has more data. Um, easy to understand. Um, this one is called a truncated conditional augmentation. Uh, but I think it's a. Uh, this is, a, I think, a mathematically interesting. But it all comes from the VAE. Okay. So normally, generating a high-resolution sample involves first generating a Z0 from a low-resolution model. I think they, inter they changed the, the XT to they introduce a z0 so you, you this is the first time you see the z0 so it might be confusing um so you may want to ask what is z i wish i can crop the, the image from here to there so this is your forward process. You get XT, but in in real scenario, when you have a real low resolution image, it, it won't be ex be XT because it's not corrupted. It's or or not corrupted by you. It's corrupted by someone. You cannot call it an XT. So because it doesn't go, it didn't go through this uh, forward process. It, it might went to some process, but it's not the process done by you. So they use the Z0. Okay. But you can think about it as a, you know, somebody did XT for you. They call it Z0. So Z0 is a low resolution image. Okay. So when you get a. So. Uh, sorry, I corrected what I have said. Um, indeed, this is the VAE model, right? So I was using these type of notations. Um, you can use a notation like this. So this is the XT. I'm sorry. So this is X0. When you have X0 as input through the encoder, then you can have a Z0 in the latent space. Okay. Or this, this probability called P theta, Z0. Okay. And then you do the encoder, you can probably get X0's estimate. So the question becomes, so when I have P0, P C the zero, how do I get to estimate this, right? They, they're saying, okay, I got the theta here, sorry. This is called estimation or back reverse or recover process. Yeah, there this is a standard equation in the VAE. So basically uh, it, this is a summation of the, the marginal this is a process of marginalization and uh, you can see that uh, the PC the P0 and the P this Z0 zero can be also went through uh, a process from ZT ZT is estimated from where? from XT right? The lowest resolution image goes through this encoder, get ZT. Then keep doing this until you reach the Z0, right? And this is how this works. Okay. So you can see it's, you start from XT, uh, get the ZT, and ZT 
go forward and uh, backward and backward until you get the z0 and use the z0 to estimate x0 okay like showing this equation but in the truncated conditioning augmentation you to truncate the low resolution reverse process to stop at the time step s instead of zero so let me have a better drawing here huh? this encoder you got zt actually uh, you got p theta z t right and you 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 keep doing this until you you get this prob you got this probability distribution right let me draw it here ZT. from there to go p z t minus one until you went through this process right but the truncated means that instead of uh, stopping at p0 you just uh, stop some in the middle let me use another colorless pen okay you start at the middle which is p theta zs and s is greater than zero so you see you didn't went through all the stage the extra stage to go to from zs to zero to zero and they say that you can still use the zs to estimate your x zero which is true right equation two Uh, and uh, this is exactly the uh, the same as shown before. So the the estimating of the x t. So originally, suppose you don't have the x t here. So all you do is go from estimation is from x t to x t minus one. But this time you add another z s as your condition, right? The, this one goes to this one so you have two factors that can determine the distribution of xt so you can see suppose you, uh, the distribution still follows the normal distribution but this one this time the mean uh, has an extra factor which is zs okay but uh and also uh, for your forward process in this distribution you can always add okay suppose i want to crop the data i can always corrupt uh, not only based on the xc oh sorry uh for the forward process i think this is a jointed jointed distribution it can be using the id assumption that uh, break down into this uh, I think this one suggests that they assume that uh, uh, the XC and the ZT are always independent, which I doubt this. Uh, but I, I think this is a easy to deduct, I guess. Uh, the ELBO this time is this. This again is the 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 latent space distance, right? latent space distance easy to understand this one is your estimation uh, error you want to minimize this uh, but pay attention to this so it doesn't go all the way um, so it start from s okay I'm sorry it stop at s it doesn't go all the way to 
Z0. Okay. Which I think is, I just explained it before. Uh, I think this equation, I think they just write that one, just plugging this equation, they, these two equations, they just plug this, this equation and this equation to this equation. And they got this equation. And they got the ELBO bound for the combined model. You can see they put this one to here. <laughs> um, definitely, they, they want to minimize this, I think. Yeah. So once they minimize this, they can push, keep pushing this. So this one is uh, being estimated better, as I ex explained it before. Okay. So you may ask why they wanted to stop in the middle uh, other than go directly to um, Z0. I think they mentioned the reason here. Yes, right here. They always sample the Z0 using the full non-truncated low resolution reverse process. I think they mentioned somewhere, but I forgot where they mentioned that. So I gotta um I think I read the the reason why they wanna use this or they explain the, the initiative behind this. I think it's this sentence. The reason truncating the low resolution reverse process is a form of data augmentation. Yeah, it's a form of data augmentation. So, um, because you can see that you always go from, so you can see the Z0 to ZT, it has this uh, forward uh, corruption uh, procedure as well um so you can see one z zero can go many many um z ones right and one z one can go to many many z twos so you can see that um, for Z0, I may not have that many samples, but if I stop before Z0, I have more uh, latent samples, for example, ZZS. For example, Z0, I may have maybe a thousand samples, but Z0, I may have a, a hundred thousand samples. So this is, is a form of a data augmentation. The more data your model can get better. That's the reason you want to behind this. But indeed, I think they, they mentioned that they didn't actually use the equation. They trained on the hybrid loss counterpart. But, but I think that theoret uh, theoretically, um, these two things are um, equivalent. And the non truncated conditional augmentation. So they just said that s equals to zero. So you back, uh, reverse all the way to z p zero and do the same thing. I think that's the normal way of doing this. So they compare this with the truncated conditional augmentation in the experimental section. 
Okay, let's look at the experiment. Uh, I will skip that their settings. Um, I'm not sure whether you're interested in seeing this. This is a class-wise synthetic uh, data. Image net classes. Yeah, they synthesize um, different classes. Uh, I think uh, they, for different class, they try to recover the high resolution image. I saw some artifacts um, on my screen, but I think it's very good. And I'm happy with that. And this one, is some other class samples they recovered. I, I like this one. I, I, I'm pretty sure you, you, you guys all like this one. This one looks really, you know, savvy. Uh, and they also try to use the uh, recovered image to perform the classification task. You can see that it's not as good as the real data. So it, you, you suffer from the, the recognition error. And this is a FID metric. So when you're using the class conditional image net, sample quality result, um, I think if FID means the fidelity image or the real image yeah something like this right the smaller the value is the, the better the model is I, well, I can see that this is a definitely better in the 200 256 by 256 resolution higher resolution case but this one logan is slightly better than them in the 128 resolution or the resolution case and the big guys number is better right but i think what is is Table one, let's look at the table one result. Yeah, they say guy and better in inception score. Is that some uh, subjective scores? Um, you have to check by yourself because I'm not a computer vision people. Um, because they're when their truncated parameter is optimized for inception score. Oh, their 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 parameters is optimized for this this task. Yeah, I think that's the reason they mentioned. Anyways, uh, but the, the, the fidelity score or, or this, this score is fairly good. Sample quality, very good. This is classification accuracy is the best compared to other algorithm. Uh, I do want to show you this. Um, this is interesting. The, the, the middle and the right columns are two algorithms they are trying to compare with. And the left column is their proposed method. See that in most of the faces are twisted. <laughs> but this one is more, I think, subjectively speaking, and this one is definitely better. Faces are better than these two. And this one is worse in, in terms of face. Um, I think this one failed, right? This one also failed. 
in terms of the, the goldfish. This one looks good. Especially this one, I think. Uh, in terms of... Uh, ostrich? I can't, I cannot tell too much difference. Especially VQV, this one is uh, very good. This one is not good. Wait. Um, compare improvement to a non cascade baseline. Uh, you can see that um, this one more sampling steps. Um, I'm still not very clear. What do they mean by FID versus train? Um, but I assume that the smaller the battery, the, the better the result is. Um, I think that the, the improvements is trivial, not very big in the A, right? In the A, figure A, but in the table 2A, trivial. But if you look at, um, Oh, that's a non-cascade baseline. So this is an always non-cascade. Um, this one is having cascading. Okay, so th this is their baseline. You see this this column they copied from this column. This is just a better baseline. Okay, this is just a better baseline. And uh, when they're using the cascade uh, operation, uh, this one significantly. Um, outperform the net cascading one. Although, if you do not cas cascading steps enough, the result is worse. It's showing that this this one, right? Interesting. Uh, too many uh, images. I would uh, skip this one. Now, this one is base model for low resolution conditioning. The B is ground truth for low resolution conditioning. Uh, large scale experiment compared to truncated. So th yeah, this is comparison between the truncated and the non con con truncated conditional augmentation we just mentioned above. Um, It seems to me that in the in the table A, truncated and truncated doesn't make much difference, right? In terms of the best result, although the IS is slightly better than the non truncated version. Um, but when you go to the branch, oh, this is a controlled experiment. If I'm not, yeah, I don't have time to attempt to, to go through the ground truths. I don't understand what this ground truths mean here. So the author's conclusion, yeah, the show sample quality table three P shows the sample quality when the super resolution model is conditioned on the ground truths. Oh yes, this is a con this is a controlled experiment. Instead of generated data, um, so here sample quality monotonically degree at the truncated time is increased. Oh, I think they means. Oh, they wanna study that. Um, okay, what this means is that uh, if you you set S to zero, that means no truncation, right? So. It seems to me that uh, you shouldn't use truncation in this scenario, or you shouldn't use the truncation because the S0 equals zero is always the best one. Yeah, correct me if I were wrong, right? They, they, you always should, should not do truncation. So you should always set S to zero.
But in the table 3A, that means that the truncated and non-truncated conditional augmentation are approximately equally effective. And they just, just generally recommend this one. Uh, they still recommend to use the non-truncated augmentation due to its practical benefit as mentioned in section 3.3. .3. Uh, I think they, they, they talk about the, the, the benefit. Um, this is the main advantage. So it means that they, uh, if you, 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 you truncate in the truncated um, version, um, you have to, if you in the no, no truncated, sorry. Yeah, I think they, they should say you should use a non truncated version. Yeah, non truncated version. All right. Yeah, use a non truncated augmentation, right? This is the FID on the image versus inference steps. Um, definitely want to have more steps. A uh, Gaussian blur noise. I just just mentioned this one. They should use the the, the blur one because it's like data augmentation. Um, this is some uh, some tricks. I think we'll skip this. All right. Thanks for watching. See you next week.